Lines. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I too rise to um, oppose this bill, and uh, as the Chamber is aware, Labor has put forward uh, amendments tonight. And I think, uh, as Senator Seward has said, this bill has got to be seen in a much broader context. It's not a standalone bill, indeed. And you'd have to wonder, um, looking at when you look at everything the Abbott government is attempting to do to uh, long-term job seekers, people under 30, you'd have to wonder what their real agenda is and what the motivation for the harsh, cruel attacks on um, most Australians is really about. And I want to start, um, first of all, looking at those under 30. And we've seen the sorts of provisions that the Abbott government wants to put in place, denying people access to a benefit for at least six months, which in and of itself is such a harsh measure. measure and um, falling back onto families if they have them, or becoming homeless, or who knows what. Uh, but that measure in and of itself is a shocking measure and one that Labor clearly doesn't support. But it doesn't sit there on its own. It, it uh, lines up with a whole lot of other harsh, cruel measures. We've also seen some very good programs that get young people re-engaged in work or re-engaged uh, in education be slashed. And we know that from this month on, Youth Connections um, <clears throat> is going to lose its funding. And I must say that I held out hope that somehow the government would see that this is a program uh, that you would never cut because it's got a, uh, an enduring success rate of getting young people either back into education or back into school. But seemingly there's no backing down from this government on Youth Connections. Uh, and uh, it will lose its funding. And a program which has got a proven track record out in the community will disappear. And what do we have in its place? Work for the doll, which we know in and of itself is one, very, very, very expensive, and two, is a failed program. And it doesn't offer the sorts of supports to young people in particular that programs like Youth Connections do. And the other advantage about Youth Connections is it's not even expensive to run. It's a very economical program, much more economical than uh, than um, work for the doll will be. But nevertheless, uh, the government has just ruled the red pen through it without any analysis, um, any research, just decided it's got to go because they think their work for the doll program um, is, is the one to go for. And last week we heard uh, we held a Senate inquiry about another program, RecLink, which also indirectly gets people back to work. Because it's not good enough to say to people who are on the margins of society or um, who find themselves unable to get back into work that a punishment regime is going to work. I mean, there's no research to suggest punishing people is what's going to work. But that is, in fact, what the Abbott government wants to do with this bill, with the abolition of youth connections, with the uh, loss of funding to a program right, like RecLink, with uh, its harsh regime for those under 30 to say you're on your own for at least six months, it could be more. And these sorts of penalties are not about mutual obligation. They're not. And it doesn't matter how the government likes to dress it up. They're not about mutual obligation. They are going too far. They're one-sided and they're about saying to people, you are on your own. Government is not there to support you. It's a lift, lifters and leaners agenda. Uh, the government has said that themselves. And we've heard some really shocking comments come uh, from the Abbott government about this view that somehow young people are home um, sitting on the couch eating twisties. Um, you know, playing with the Xbox. I mean, for goodness sake, that, that's a brush that tarnishes all young people. And where's the evidence of that? There, there is none. It's just a throwaway line, like lifters and leaners, like this view that somehow people need this kick up the backside to get them out the door to work. Well, what work? What we're seeing now in Australia is climbing uh, unemployment, sadly. And none of us in this place would want people to be unemployed. I mean, that is our common motivation. No one here wants to see people unemployed. But how we get people into employment differs 
uh, quite markedly between um, Labor and the government. And it seems that the Abbott government's agenda is about punishing people and about saying to people, you're on your own. We are here to only help those who are able to help themselves. And that's a very, very narrow agenda, unfortunately. And again, when this bill came to us, we were given a very short time frame uh, to examine this bill. And there's a real disincentive um, for us to hold public hearings. And we were asked if we wanted to hold um, to do a report on, on the submissions. Well, of course we don't. We want people to come before the Senate face to face. And again, again and again, what we've seen is a failure by the Abbott government to recognise that there are experts out there in the community. I'm not an expert on, on jobs. I'm the first to admit that. I don't pretend to be an expert in the employment field. But there are experts out there, and we can learn from them. They deal with people in, uh, who are unemployed. They deal with people who um, are making tough life decisions every day. That's their expertise, and yet it seems to me the Abbott government doesn't want to hear from them because uh, trying to get uh, committees up and uh, give people a respectful time in which to give their evidence is not something that is at the forefront of the Abbott government's agenda. So we had very little time to examine this bill. In fact, uh, during Senate estimates, because this legislation is not in place, the department was not able to really give us a lot of information. When we held the public hearing um, a couple of weeks ago, I think we had at best a couple of hours. Now that doesn't do uh, justice to any of the evidence that we took, because um, these are largely, I mean, the National Welfare Rights Group, who have years and years of expertise in this area, and we have a lot to learn from them. And we don't have to agree with everything they say. Um, I'm not suggesting that for one moment. But to dismiss their evidence as somehow on the left or not worthy is a disrespect to that service, because they do have something to tell us. And uh, you know, we gave them something like 45 minutes. Equally, the ACTU, 45 minutes, and then the department, and that was it. That was the end of the, the time that we had. And I would like to uh, thank the staff of the committee for, for doing their best. But when we are time and time again crammed, uh, get legislation at the last minute, and then uh, a lot of pressure is put on us to not have an inquiry, it's just not on. I mean, the public has a right to know. Uh, the government should be open and transparent, and these matters should be well ventilated throughout the community, because the people who will um, be the recipients of the outcomes of this sort of legislation, if it gets through the parliament, are ordinary Australians who have a right to understand the motivation uh, behind, um, behind the, the legislation. But it doesn't sit there in and of itself. It sits in a very harsh regime. It sits in a regime which is underpinned by you're on your own. It sits uh, in a regime that's very much a right-wing Tea Party conservative agenda, and we're seeing that more and more from the Abbott government, this Americanisation um, of a whole range of issues, including our social security system. And this is the start. We are more and more in this country under the Abbott government taking that safety net away, when we've always had that safety net in place in our country. And it's what we pride ourselves on in Australia. We're a fair go country. We, we look out for each other. And that includes having a, a fair and just social security system. And of course, one that's got mutual obligation. I haven't heard anyone uh, in this place saying no mutual obligation. Of course, there has to be mutual obligation. But this is not mutual obligation. Taking away a person's right of appeal, uh, putting very harsh penalties in place, uh, penalising a person so that they, if they miss appointments, they're not entitled to to have back pay. Those. That goes beyond mutual obligation, way beyond mutual obligation. It is the, it's the beginning of an attack on our social security system in a much broader context of saying, uh, no, you are, you are a leaner and therefore you are not entitled to a payment. That's clearly where we're heading for this. When you take the step back 
when you take a long-term view of what the Abbott government is putting in place here. It is an agenda which smacks of uh, we are going to take the safety net away. Bit by bit we are going to remove it, and that's what we've seen the Abbott government do uh, with this bill. And when Labor was in government, we did have mutual obligation. We did have penalties in place. There's no doubt about that. And there's no reason to, to um, make anything harsher on a job seeker. I couldn't imagine being unemployed for a very long period of time and through perhaps um, an accident of mine of not being able to get to an appointment, suddenly I'm penalised is completely unfair. And we're seeing now in our country, very sadly, we're seeing very high rates of youth unemployment. We know from the inquiry that significant numbers of um, those who fall foul or currently fall foul of the sorts of obligations that Labor put in place are largely young men. So it isn't, it isn't as if we don't know who these people are that uh, are currently being penalised. We do know who they are. And of course, no prizes for guessing. Overrepresented in that group are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Overrepresented in our jails. Overrepresented in the unemployment numbers. Well, why would we then think that applying a harsher penalty to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders is somehow going to get to make things better? I mean, the, this is generations of disadvantage and of marginalisation and of, of racism, it needs a better answer. It needs a much deeper understanding and, yes, have some penalties there, but not of this nature, to continue to punish people who are already marginalised in our society. It doesn't make any sense and it won't get people into work because, in many places, there are no work. There isn't work. I, I think of Quinana in Western Australia, which is uh, a a, a beachside industrial town about uh, 40 kilometres from the CBD, it's got an appalling rate of unemployment. It's shocking. So what are we going to do? Go into that community and say to young people, it's your fault? The jobs are simply not there for those young people. They're just not there. Because obviously where there are high rates of unemployment, whether it's males of a particular age, whether it's young people, that should signal to us that we need to do something else, that we need to have more supports in place, that we need to look at what else we can do to make sure that people's self-esteem and their self-worth remain in place. Because we know uh, as a society that long-term unemployment has lots of other consequences. People start to doubt their self-worth. Well, if you're up against someone who's newly unemployed and you've been unemployed a much longer period of time, you're probably just thinking, well, it's the same old, same old, I won't get this job either. And yet these are the very people the Abbott government wants to penalise. To what end? If there aren't the jobs there, uh, these people won't be able to get them. And again, in my home state of Western Australia, we are now seeing, <clears throat> with the mining turning more to out of the construction stage, we are seeing higher rates of unemployment. And that's a fact, not through the fault of the job seeker. We don't suddenly in Western Australia have a whole new group of leaners. We certainly don't. We have uh, a changing labour market situation. And for a period of time, and let's hope that it's not a long period of time, we will have a higher rate of unemployment. So what are we going to do? Penalise a whole new group of people? To what end? To what end? We're going to have them all working for the dole? We're going to have them all penalised with no back pay the minute that they miss an appointment? I mean, all of us in this room have missed, I'm sure, significant appointments in our lifetime. I know I have. First to hold my hand up to say I have missed significant appointments. And if I, I've certainly done it more than once. And what we are saying to people like this is, you miss an appointment and that's it. That's it. We'll fine you, uh, you'll uh, be penalised, and not only that, we won't give you your back pay. And I've got to say, as someone who's got a very strong sense of natural justice, to take uh, someone's money away 
and, and then they do the right thing, they get back on the track, they make their appointments, and then to not pay them that money is inherently unfair. It's really, really unfair to have that sort of punishment regime to say to someone, even if you fix up the missed appointment, we're still going to penalise you. It doesn't make any sense to me. And the other uh, issue of concern to Labor is this um, list, this longer list of what can be, um, what people can be penalised for, uh, and the lack of review. I mean, <coughs> our society, our democracy, is based on a belief that if you feel that a decision has gone against you, you have the right of review, and that is something we should cherish. It is a strong part of our democracy, and it's not something we should be taking away from people. That principle that uh, if you've been wrong or you think you've been um, dealt a harsh blow, that you have a right of reply, and anyone, regardless of their uh, political persuasion, should support something like that. And um, so we want um, this review period, we, we want to rem have remain in place this right of <coughs> review, and that um, for us sets a dangerous precedence um, where people are denied their natural justice, denied natural justice and denied their, their right to appeal. That is inherently unfair as well. Um, and we've heard in this place that um, Aboriginal people are likely to be penalised. People with a, um, some sort of disability will uh, no doubt fall foul of this because we already know those people do already fall foul of the current um, mutual obligations that are in place. So why would we make it harder for them? I mean, what is behind the government's motivation here? It is saying to people who are unemployed, you really are on your own. Um, and if we just look at the numbers, last year uh, Centrelink applied more than 13,000 smaller daily no-show, no-pay penalties for job seekers with known vulnerability indicators. So we knew that those job, job seekers were vulnerable. So that included more than 4,000 with psychiatric problems or mental illness. So here's a, a group with known issues that we sought last year to penalise. More than 2,000, in fact nearly 2,500, with a homelessness flag on their file were penalised. Almost 400 released from prison who were penalised, and almost 300 who had experienced a recent traumatic relationship breakdown, and almost another 300 job seekers with cognitive or neurological impairment. So these are, the, these are some of the groups who again will fall foul of this harsh penalty regime. Well, why would we do that as a community? Why aren't we getting underneath those issues? and trying to work through uh, what's in the best interest of, of this group of people. We should be supporting them, not punishing them, because obviously whatever we're doing currently is not particularly working with this group of people, but we're going to make it worse. And we did see, actually, uh, from the inquiry that giving the job services um, agencies the uh, opportunity to to be the first point of call when people missed appointments is having an effect. So getting that call from someone that you know that says, hey, Sue, you missed your appointment, what happened, um, is working. So that's already working. It hasn't been in place very long, but we're just going to chop that out and just say, no, we can't be bothered doing that. We're just going to put these pe uh, penalties in place. So I would urge the government to, to look at this, to really come clean on what its agenda is. Uh, to drop its Tea Party ideology and to start to give job seekers a real opportunity in, in Australia, that opportunity of support and proper, fair and even mutual obligation is really uh, what we're seeking tonight. And I would urge the government to support Labor's amendments. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President.